and we're back. So here we go with section 2.4, continuity and when cited in limits. So let's hit continuity first. So we're gonna define it in two ways. I'll give you a layman's term and then we'll look at the formal uh, definition. So a function is continuous if its graph, if its graph has no holes, jumps, gaps, vertical asymptotes, etc. You don't want anything that's going to like break the graph into like two or more pieces. Um, so another way you could look at this is like you can draw the whole thing without lifting your pencil. Uh, so, you know, like a polynomial, um, certain trig functions, etc., etc. So functions that are continuous, um, the big category would be all polynomials. Uh, another one would be logarithm or logarithms, um, including the natural log. They have a restricted domain, but they don't have um, a vertical asymptote like in the middle of it. It's on, it's on the edge. So the curve itself doesn't have anything that breaks it. Uh, the inverse of logs would be exponentials. Sine and cosine would be uh, the only two trig functions that are continuous. And radicals in general are also continuous. Again, they have a restricted domain like the logs, but their curves don't have uh, anything that breaks it up in the middle. And these are um, kind of like the, we're not getting too crazy with these. So like for the exponentials, we're not throwing anything weird into them. So it's just like the parent functions and, and the translations and transformations of them. Okay, so that's a pretty easy definition to understand. So let's look at the formal definition to give us some more mathy background. So continuity at a point. So a function is continuous at C, and this is X equals C, if the following three conditions are met. So F of C, so you take that C value, plug it in the function, that has to be defined. Like you have to actually get an answer. Number two, if you take the limit of F of X as X approaches C, that limit has to exist. And then the third one, not only does the limit have to exist, it has to equal f of c. So if these three conditions are met, then the function is continuous at that point. So now it's continuous on an open interval if it's continuous everywhere at each point in the interval. And if it's continuous on the entire real line, so like a polynomial, the sine and cosine curves, that is said to be everywhere continuous. <clears throat> All right, example one, determine where the function is continuous. So part A, just talked about it kind of, uh, that is everywhere continuous. So it is continuous from negative infinity to infinity. Moving over to part B, there's one number that you can't stick in for x, and that would be x equals zero. Any other number is fair game. So on any other x value, it's continuous. We just gotta leave out the zero. So asking where a function is continuous is almost like asking where, you know, what the domain is. <clears throat> so for part C, you've got the x in the denominator. So even though it's a cosine function, you have the x in the denominator, so you gotta leave out the zero again. Part 
part D. Where is that thing continuous? Well, you can plug any number you want into an exponent. Uh, so e to anything is always going to give you a result. So it's continuous on the entire real line. Okay, so not a, a tricky thing to understand, like what continuity is. Um, <clears throat> especially if you can remember this, this one, this is the formal. Um, so you got to know what it is, because um, I might ask you some conceptual con or questions on that, but we'll, we'll get to that uh, later. Okay, so I'll stop the video here, then we'll continue on with kind of the flip side of this.